Welcome to Flip This Town. I'm Carla Davis. And I'm Michael Scoggins. Today, we're on South Main Street because we were looking on the internet and look what we found. We found a picture in the Middletown Library, Library Lens on that website. We found a picture of this fountain. It's uh, the Robbins Fountain on Historic Main. Do you know anything about this fountain? Well, now this Other fountain, where it is? well, <laughs> through our studies, uh, found out that this fountain was in the, the uh, Woodside Cemetery, about the turn of the century. And uh, later on, uh, it was disassembled and brought over here and rebuilt. Um, and the other thing is that uh, this whole area is supported by a uh, group of owners that call themselves PRISM. Well, that's right. That's that acronym I can't remember. Um, why don't you tell them? <laughs> because I'm the smart one. The acronym means Preservation, Restoration, and Improvement of South Maine. Ooh, that was, that was pretty nice. Well, <laughs> well done, well done. Um, but there's a ge one particular gentleman, his name's Joe, and he voluntarily comes over and helps to clean the fountain. He belongs and is a part of to prison. Yeah. Um, but Right now, why don't we head over and meet Joe? And really, we can meet Joe, one of the members that helps support this area, and we can even learn Joe's last name. Oh, that would be Let's good. Let's go. Nice. All, All right. right. <laughs> this way. Well, hi. How are you guys doing? Fine. How are you? Good. Oh, we're doing well. Good. And this is your wife, Linda. My wife, Linda. So nice. To, uh, thank you for letting us uh, come and visit your home. Our pleasure. Exactly. Our now pleasure. understand that in this home actually burnt down. What, 2004, 2004, two, three years? 2004, yeah, about just before Christmas, 2004. And to, to the ground? No, uh, the house is made, or the original house was made out of brick, just like this one is faced with brick. And uh, the shell was just the only thing that was left. Oh, that Some of the interior walls, but How not too horrible. much. Yeah, that must have been des devastating. One of, those, one of those things that happens. Oh, good. At least you two were okay, right? Yeah, we were out of town. Well, not out of town. We were out to dinner with some friends and came home to the fire. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. Do you know how the fire started? Uh, the fire marshal determined that there was a problem with the uh, heat exchanger uh, from the, the furnace that was there. It was in the, too close to the rafters in the building. And uh, over time, it just heated up the, the beams to a charcoal type of uh, consistency. And then the flash point just decreased to such a point that it just caught fire one night when we were gone. So it was the way that houses were constructed mm, back when I, it was I guess so. Built? I think oh, that's what it wow. was. And it's one of those things that happens. Yeah. Oh, goodness mm -hmm. gracious. And were you able to save anything? Right. Before we uh, demolished the house, we were able to take out some of the old fireplaces, some of the old woodwork, uh, some of the door latches, which we all incorporated into this house. Oh, and you put it back in. Yeah, put it back in. It was really neat. Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. But you decided to rebuild the house in the yes, same configuration. So. Yes, the house basically looks the same today as the old house did. Uh, the only thing that is uh, missing at this point uh, is the front railings on the front lower level and the top. Um, it's a situation of not having enough money to finish, do all the things that you wanted to do, you know. <laughs> exactly. But that's the only thing that is different for it. So and the layout on the inside is a little bit different oh, too. Oh, okay. Were you able to use a local um, contractor to rebuild? Yes, we were. Um, we went around, when we were figuring out what we wanted to do, mm -hmm. uh, we happened to see some uh, houses that were open on the other end of town. And it, uh, one of the houses was uh, put up by um, fishball builders. And so we went inside and, and just the feel the, of the house, uh, the strength of the house, we thought, well, maybe if we were gonna build a house, these were the type of people we wanted to use. So we contacted them and uh, contacted a um, um, architect mm -hmm. and uh, wanted them to get an idea of what it might cost us to put this house back up again or something similar to the old house. Well, it's gorgeous. It well, is beautiful. Thank you very much. Now, understand that uh, uh, this is part of the historic district, and it is. every other year you have tours? We have tours. We have house tours uh, during the holidays. Put that in our social calendar. There you okay, go. That's right. That's Matter right. of fact, uh, we had built the house, and we were only in about, about six months, and we opened up the house so, oh that, the, so that the world, <laughs> the city, could yeah. see what we <laughs> You know, put back up again. Yeah, what you absolutely. done? What you done? That yeah, was, yeah, that's awesome. And you said that's in December. Is it's that in right? December. December. Yeah, the first Sunday in December. Oh goodness! So I assume you decorate for Christmas. Well, at all <laughs> the houses, the whole streets all decorated. Uh, we put luminaries up on the street. Carriage oh. rides. Oh, how cool. uh, we have the whole thing. The house, the street is closed off to vehicles. Mm -hmm. So it's really oh. a nice walking tour, and uh, all the money that we raise from the house tour uh, goes to fixing the fountain. Just oh, the fountain, all right, that we saw it up. Yeah. on yeah. Middletown right, exactly. Library lens. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. been an ongoing 
program for, oh geez, since the 1980s, I think before they even put the fountain back up. After your, the devastation of your house mm -hmm. burning down, did you consider living elsewhere? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you, you take all those type of things into consideration when something like this happens. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to explore other areas uh, in town, out of town, whatever. But basically, we looked around in town and well, we found a couple houses that we were interested in. But then when you come back here and you see this property, and more so the neighbors that we have. Um, a part of the story of when the house burned down was that uh, our neighbors, while they were here with us and are supporting us while we were watching the fire department try to put this thing out, they were planning on what they were gonna help us do to stay here. Mm -hmm. um, and what they did is they had found an apartment down the street and by the next morning, by noon the next morning, they had a, a apartment all furnished for us with all wow. the, everything, <laughs> with the furniture, yeah. with bedding, with towels, with foodstuffs, everything. That's so amazing. that we could be close to here to help us make our decision to um, that is wonderful. Yeah, it, it was that was their so, subtle hint to say they wanted to well, say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, going through all that and knowing how they felt about us mm -hmm. just yeah. reinforced on how we felt about them. How could you leave after we that? Could, yeah, we couldn't. So yeah. we made that decision to, um, you know, bite the bullet and stay here and wonderful. Um, figure out how to make this house look the way it is and try to bring back some of the charm of what it was. And you don't totally, you know, duplicate what you had, but in that old house was just unbelievably charming. But Well, it, this, this one ain't really, bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very livable. Um, yeah. She's decorated in such a way that it's home again. And so in your house, I gather, is probably your hobby? <laughs> well, yeah. With an old house, it yeah. was you know really a hobby, trying yeah. to fix it up like some of the other people have done on the street. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. There's still a huge yard and a lot of maintenance and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. it's fun. You know, it's the thing we like to do. Well, now we're still on South Main, but we've moved down a few houses from where we met the Hudex to uh, be in front of this beautiful home. And this beautiful home was built in 1872 by Henry and Marion Leiby. Now, Henry and Marion happened to own several one of the several businesses one of them was a brick making business mm -hmm. and as you can see the entire house is made of brick it's and a even brick the, house it's a brick house <laughs> even the interior walls are made of brick so it was very convenient for them because they own that company they also owned tobacco company and a twine making company and a little piece of trivia Henry and Marion were only 23 years old when they built this house so what were you doing when you were 23 I'm not gonna tell. Hey, what were you doing when you were 23? I don't know. I haven't turned 23 yet. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, another piece of interesting trivia is that the gentleman or the owner um, actually painted all the detail work by himself. And uh, just to get you from the original owner to the current owner, after the Libes owned the house, they sold it to George M. Verity, who didn't really want to live in the house, but he wanted to use the property to... Um, create or construct his own golf course. <laughs> Go figure. Four. Yes, I know. <laughs> the, uh, the wealthy, the rich, and the famous. And uh, then after the Verities were ready to sell, they sold it to uh, the Emersons, which at the time Mr. Emerson was a president of Armco International. They lived in it uh, for a long time as well. And then after that, unfortunately, it kind of went, took a downturn and uh, it became a, a rooming house. It was um, a nursing home, eventually became a psychiatric and substance abuse home, and then sat vacant for a couple of years until the current owner bought it and just worked a small miracle. Well, small, worked large a large miracle on it. Miracle. But the part that I'm excited about right now is that the owner is going to allow us all the way on top to the roof to see the view. Dude, that is not a roof, that's a Belvedere. Oh, okay. Anyway, we're going up. I don't want to go up. <laughs> Too bad. Ah! <laughs> Hi, well we made it up here. We had to climb some ladders and go around some stairs and everything. Yes. But it's wonderful and you have a beautiful view. And behind me you can see the golf course that we were talking about earlier. I can't believe you dragged me up here just to see a lousy golf course. Oh, come on, there's so much more to see. You can see all these wonderful historic homes down oh, they here. They are pretty. And it's just, it's cool to be up here. Right over there uh, uh, on the other side of the trees is the uh, Miami River and uh, AK Steels. I can see my house. No, I think I can see my parents' house. Okay, there we go. 
Um, but uh, right now, I think I need to get Carla down because she's getting, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've moved down the street, and I'm standing here with Nancy Romero, who is working on rehabbing the house behind us. And Nancy, I'm so sorry, Michael's not here with me. I let, he's on the Belvedere. I can't get him down, so you're just going to have to talk to me. And I figure it's okay. his loss. It is his loss. That's right. <laughs> So Nancy, um, I know this is not the first house that you've rehabbed. This is not my first house. You've been doing this for a while. 20 something years. Isn't that amazing? Well, you started when you were 12, right? I did, yeah, thanks. That's yeah, that's what I uh -huh. thought, yeah. This house I bought um, to restore. It had gone to um, Sheriff's Auction and uh, I had sort of gotten word of that um, and I was afraid it would go to um, somebody who wanted to use it and my concern was that whoever had bought it would want to maintain its multifamily um, standing and I didn't I really didn't want that to happen I used to own the house next door it was my first house that I owned it was my first house that I uh, that I rehabbed and restored and so I was afraid to see this one deteriorate any further so when it went to sheriff's auction I, I convinced my my dad as my financier <laughs> and he uh, he Yay. He accepted this as my next project. So we bought uh, we bought this house um, actually from a, an agent that it went to sheriff's auction and the, the bank bought it back and I bought it from them actually um, right the day it went on the market. So I was lucky to get it. I think they were standing in line, but they were people who wanted to keep it as um, as apartments. So oh, okay. Well, so uh, and, and taking it back to like an original single family home yes. and stuff, I assume uh, stays in line with Prism's whole mission yes well our mission is preservation restoration and improvement and um, while we're not against multifamily housing necessarily these houses were built as individual family homes they were not intended to be chopped up and cut up and have plumbing run to bedrooms Hither to make them kitchens yes, yes. Yeah. so this is the this home's original intention and uh, I, I'd like to get back to its original intention as close as possible and uh, with plumbing I'm, with plumbing <laughs> <laughs> we like, yeah. I was gonna say, you know, that whole indoor plumbing that's thing. That's a good is, thing. It's, that's mm -hmm. a good thing. Yeah, we don't need to totally take it back to the outhouse, no, do we? No. Um, now I, I've uh, under I'm under the understanding that um, when you get these houses, you maybe do some research or something on how you want to paint the outside. I. I do, I haven't done, uh, the houses that I've lived in, I of course know, you know, everything about the families and who they were and what the kids' names were and, and that kind of thing. This one, I didn't actually do uh, a lot of research yet. I know, um, I've talked to the previous, the owners who lived here um, 20 years ago and they have original blueprints for me and, and I will get the names. I know Harlan was the original build or owner's name, but I don't know the intricacies of its history. These colors that I'm putting on this house, this is the primer coat, by the way, but the actual colors are, are going to be pretty close. Okay. Um, are, they're, they're Sherwin-Williams uh, palette. They have a historic color palette. So uh -huh. these colors were, were probably available at the time that this house was built. Okay. So um, these are historic colors, not necessarily historic to this house. Uh -huh. I do know that, that a lot, most of these colors were originally on that house because we did have the paint analyzed uh -huh. um, originally then. But... Um, now I remember the original house that you did. It was beautiful when you were finished. It was gorgeous. It and that's that that's gotten to be what I do. That house when I bought it was mm -hmm. condemned. There yeah. was no yeah. um, running plumbing or heat. It had been empty forever. It had been really trashed and um, and it's not now. It's it's a it's a shining gem and the. <laughs> In the bracelet of South Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> did you just come up oh, with that, that off fun. the top? Yeah, of your I head? did. That was <laughs> um, and uh, listen, you own more. Well, you have uh, more than just this property, right? Right on the now, not that I <laughs> like to own multiple properties. I I do live, still live on South Main Street. I've uh -huh. lived on South Main Street my entire adult life. I started uh -huh. renting an apartment down the street. I bought this house um, at 600 um, when I was in my 20s. Um, worked on it for 10 or. 12 years and then I used wow. the equity to buy a, a, a nice big brick down on at 121 and uh, that's almost done of course they're never done that's right, right but right, it's almost right. to where right. I've completed everything yeah. and um, and then this is my this is my my third house on South Main Street and then I also own one down the street so well, and I believe we're gonna go check out the other houses that you oh, own good. if I'm not mistaken yes. and um, do we uh, need to go in is there anything inside we need to see here oh absolutely or? well let's go <laughs> Here we are in the foyer. I love what you've done with the place. Thanks, isn't it great? <laughs> they always look worse before they look better. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they always take 
twice as much time and three times more money. That's, than you thought. Yeah, than yeah. you thought. <laughs> Next is the the parlor here, okay. and so for your parlor, um, yeah, nice flow, fabulous pocket doors. Look at these, yes, these I oh, pocket yeah. doors. They're um, you actually they're oak on one side and cherry on the other. Really? Because this room has cherry woodwork, and that room had oak woodwork. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, I guess yeah. You can yes. tell when you look up there. Yeah. Oh my, how cool. Isn't that neat? That is neat. Is that a people? I love when this was apartments. I love. Oh, first oh. of all, I love these peoples because because look, can you imagine being on the outside of this door when <laughs> oh, you know we're all oh, it's like. <laughs> cartoon world um, so so we'll have to save those yeah yeah <laughs> the upstairs area had uh, two apartments and um, the walls were very the walls that they had added to make the apartment up here was very disruptive to the flow and I there was a wall uh, you can see where the floor pattern oh, yeah, was this sure is can. a this is a wall line so we would have been in a very cramped little hallway yes um, when I bought the house, these walls all came out so that now we've got um, basically three bedrooms right here off of this little corner. And uh, I love the angle. Aren't they fabulous? Yeah. The Victorians loved their, uh, their detail. <clears throat> I just don't know what else to say, <laughs> except maybe we need to go to the next house. Well, we've strolled down the lane here on South Main. We strolled the lane on South Main uh, to see another <laughs> house that uh, Nancy's been working on. And it just happens to be at the edge of, I guess, if, see, if this is 808, I guess it's the end of the South Main District. This is the last house that's currently in the designated National Historic Register mm -hmm. of Historic Places District. Okay. Uh, which South Main Street is. It's a federal um, district under the, the National Trust. It's and my home sweet home where I currently live. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank Just you. beautiful. Oh my. Um, and I, I love the, the intricacies of that extra little ornate stuff there. That's beautiful. Isn't that fabulous? Yes. Um, I can't, of course, I can't claim, you know, other than I, I had the good sense to buy it. I didn't actually <laughs> create any of it. Uh -huh. Um, I heard the original, the grandson of the original owner describe these spaces as joy and sorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, my, my high school theater background, I like to refer to them as comedy and tragedy. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then I'm not sure the significance. Um, all of the houses have very detailed uh, work uh, over the, the entrances. Mm -hmm. These are obviously griffins and torches and flowers, and I don't know if there's significance or not, but um, they're all different. They're all unique to uh, to the particular house. It's beautiful. Well, come on let's, in. Let's go up. Oh my goodness. Isn't we, this fabulous? Uh, it is, I mean, I'm not kidding you. This is beautiful. No wonder you had to buy the house. This is exactly why I had to buy this oh, house. I am just enthralled with this woodworking. It's absolutely beautiful. This was the this was what sold me on this yeah. house. This ingle nook with the carved uh, fireplace. The um, the original builder of the house was um, uh, Simon Goldman of Goldman Park fame. Uh -huh. He had a, a store. He had a dry goods store, which uh -huh. meant not produce, but dresses and clothing and. Um, Fine apparel. But yes, shoes. And he used to travel up and down the canals and the river uh -huh. selling to, to people from Cincinnati to Dayton um, along the canals. And he decided that he liked Middletown enough to settle here. Well, I just can't thank you enough for you. showing us your houses, letting us come into your home. It's just been great. And um, I'm going to have to go get Michael, Michael off the Belvedere. I don't know what I'm going to uh, do. I don't know. So, Is you know, he swinging from the bell? <laughs> Well, you know, he flies pretty high on life, so, uh, you know, I'll have to go see what I can do. But okay. thanks again. We sure. really appreciate your time. Well, you're welcome. Thank All you right. for coming. Well, I'm strolling down the lane here at South Main, still looking for Michael. I have no idea where he's at. I guess he's still on the Belvedere. Who knows? But um, I had to stop here because we're in front of Middletown's mayor's house, Larry, Larry Mulligan's house. And this is his wife, Kristen Mulligan. So thank you, Kristen, for letting us stop and capture your house here on film. Well, would you mind if we sneak a peek nope. at the lift? You may. All right, let's go. Well, when Calvin and Elizabeth bought this house in 1917, it was a lot smaller. It was only seven rooms. Uh -huh. And about 1930, they added on a bunch of rooms at the back and some bathrooms upstairs. And this area right here, all the way through, was an open porch. So this is all new. Oh, wow. I'm not quite sure where the front door was, but mm -hmm. it may have been there. But the, the porch used to wrap around. Oh, I love wrap around porches. So the door is <laughs> new in the fact that it was put in in the 30s. Uh huh. And then the lift chair is right here. It just, <laughs> it's a silly little oh, lift chair cool. that goes up on this, you know, this pretty uh -huh. substantial cast iron track and yeah. big gears and everything. Yeah. Did you 
you want to write it down? I do. I want to write it down. Okay. I mean, this is something that Michael would do, but since Michael is not I here, I get to have all the fun. That was fun. <laughs> it's the little things. You yeah. Know? Uh, the other thing that um, is, uh, you know, that they, they tell me is pretty impressive around here is the backyard. It's through here, through the okay, dining room. Okay, let's go take a look. Well, this is the garden area. Apparently, Mrs. Verity liked to do a lot of gardening. Uh -huh. um, I think they called it Well Well's garden. I think they called her Well Well. Well Well. I'm not sure why. I was maybe hmm. she just said Well Well a lot. Yeah, or... that's an interesting nickname. <laughs> yeah, but they called it Well Well's garden. I've talked to a, a granddaughter uh -huh. who asked me if Well Well's garden was still intact, and I had <laughs> to tell her. No. <laughs> someone came in and took out, I, I, I think she had a lot of roses back here and really? a lot of plants and someone came and took them all out and planted taxis bushes. So eventually we'd like to take those out and put mm -hmm. some more interesting plants back here. Oh sure. Some roses down behind the fountain. It's a lovely space. It is. And the, the wall is, you know, you couldn't build this wall. <laughs> oh no, oh geez, it would cost you a fortune so pretty. now. It so is, it is yes. just a really nice little secluded uh, yeah. garden. Yeah. And then uh, I see just over the uh, brick wall there's a pool. Yes, the Verities put that back in in about 1930. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of work, but a lot of fun. If you'd like to go back and see it, yes, we can. Yes, can we do that? Sure. Let's go. See how the other half lived. Wow, well, isn't this just a lovely pool? It is. It's a nice little pool. Very uh, nice. Calvin and Elizabeth went on vacation, apparently. This is something that when uh, Pat Ross, I will be going to his house a little later, uh -huh. when he first moved in and he was talking to Calvin and Elizabeth, they went on vacation and there was a pool somewhere and they loved it so much they came back and sold a few shares of Arnco stock <laughs> and put this pool in. And then uh, is that's a golf course behind you? That's Forest Hills Golf Course behind us. Their pool is actually on the other side of the bushes there. Oh, okay. All right. So we can hear all the pool noise from next door and it's, it's nice. It's mm -hmm. nice to be here in the summertime. Yeah. So I gather uh, if it doesn't have drains and it doesn't have a skimmer, I'm going to say it probably doesn't have a heater either. It so. does not have a heater. The sun heats it. Okay. So do yeah. you find that it's pretty nice? It, uh, it gets up to yeah. in the 90s. If it's warm, okay. it'll get up there. Um, it starts out at about 56 oh, no when way. we fill it in the yeah. spring. Now yeah. we drain it using a sump pump. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We'll let the sun burn the chlorine out and we'll water the grass with it in the fall. Okay. Well, um, thank you so much All right. for uh, sharing your home with us. It's been sure. great. You know, we've got the pool, the lift chair. It's beautiful. Yeah, you don't have to do anything. So <laughs> clean it and, and fix there you it go. up. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you very much. All right. And I guess we're going to the past Ross Ice House next. All right. Well, let's go. All right. This house, I can tell you, was bought in 1976 by the people who live here now. He's been working on it ever since. Since 1976. Since 1976. And this man has done everything to this house uh -huh. that you can imagine. He's rewired, replumbed. Uh, when he had to tear up walls, because you have to tear entire walls out, he, he would have artists come in and re, redo things the way they were. Wow. So when I say restored, it's, it's restored. This is the crown jewel of our neighborhood, and it's actually individually listed on the National Register. I was, I was noticing the plaque when we were walking up. Right. Very the good. whole street is on the National Register of uh. Historic Places, mm -hmm. but there are, this house individually is listed. Oh. It makes it a little bit more neat. special. I'm, so. And I'm digging the window. It almost Isn't that gives great? an optical illusion. It looks like it's, yeah. uh, you know. The diamond pane glass and yeah, they're all. It is swirly. They're all kinked to, to make yeah. the light bounce back at you. Yes, it, it, yeah. and it does. <laughs> yeah. And okay. the front door, it's beautiful. This is my favorite house on the street. Okay. It's, it's amazing. Well, I think I'm ready. Let's go okay. see it. I'm excited. All right. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, the dragon doorbell. Dragon doorbell uh -huh. or ducks. I don't know, ducks with sharp teeth. Wow, and this is just the beginning. Yeah, oh this is the entryway. My. Look at the pegs. The coat it, pegs, the, I know. <laughs> this house staggers your imagination. What a it great really idea. I can't even imagine. Oh, well, it's a, The nice thing, if you're really an old house person, you live in an old house the way it's meant to be lived in. You don't yeah, try to sure. change it to modern standards. And I, yeah, I couldn't agree with you Modern more. uses, which Pat has really done. Oh. My goodness.
so much for your time. We really oh, appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. It. All right, glad you came. Hey, let's go have a cocktail. What do you say? It's it's, it's five o'clock somewhere. Right. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So now where are we? We're in front of Sword Mansion. That's right. Which I think we could consider this the cornerstone of the historic district on South Main, don't you? Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Um, Paul Sorg, it was uh, rumored, and one of the big things that I'd love to find out someday, uh, about the tunnels under the, the Sorg tunnels? Mansion. There was tunnels, rumors, I, I've never met anybody who's been in these tunnels, uh -huh. but rumors that he had connected his house to the Sorg Opera House and one of the churches right over here. So there's really? a, a, a rumor of three tunnels. Paul did all of this. Uh, well, he built that, why yeah, not? Yeah, sure, you why know? not? <laughs> yeah. And did you know he built it in 1887? Oh, no way. Ask me how much he spent on it. Five dollars. Uh, close, a million. A million? Yeah. In 1887, a million. A million bought you a lot back then, don't you think? Jeez, yeah. yeah. It's very nice. You can get half that now. <laughs> and this <laughs> is still a beautiful structure, at least from the outside, don't you agree? It is a beautiful, yeah. gorgeous house, yes. I hear that there's a carriage house in the back that's part of the property, that there's talk or, you know, speaking of rumors, maybe they would put a microbrewery in that. Wouldn't that be great? Ooh, I'd like a microbrewery. How about a restaurant and a high scale in restaurant right high in front scale. too? High scale, I'm up for a high end restaurant right, inside. That yeah. would be fantastic. That would be great. Well, there's another episode of Flip This Town, where we try to highlight the positive aspects of Middletown. I'm Michael Scoggins. And I'm Carla Davis, so thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.